Devastating news for Rams fans out here in Los Angeles, Albert, with the news coming that Cam Akers, running back for the Rams, has torn his Achilles. Suffered a torn Achilles while training, and he's going to be out for the season. How does this impact the balance of power, not only in, in the NFC West, but also in terms of a real threat to Tampa in the conference? Because I go through a lot of these rosters, and now I add the Rams to the list, Albert. A lot of question marks on these teams uh, with Aaron status in, in green Bay in question, of course, I, I don't know who the real challenger is to Tampa in the conference, especially now with acres going down. Yeah. And I, I think, uh, I think the way you want to look at this um, is yes, he had a chance to be a really good player, but if he was going to be what he was last year, I don't think the drop off from Akers to Daryl Henderson is that precipitous where it's going to change the fate of the season. Now, if Akers were to become what the Rams thought he could become, because there's a ton of untapped potential with Akers. He's a high school quarterback. He played behind a really, really shaky offensive line in college. So the whole thing with Akers is always there's going to be more there. Eventually he's going to grow as a tailback and eventually become more. So, if you're talking about what the Rams thought Akers could become, which, I mean, isn't that far off from what they had a few years ago when Todd Gurley was in his prime, then, yeah, I mean, like, you're losing a lot. But if you're talking about the player you had last year, I actually think Daryl Henderson and whatever they have depth-wise can at least approximate it where the threat of the running game is there. And that's such a big part of Sean McVay's offense is the threat of the running game opening everything else up and the marriage between the running game and the passing game. So um, I think it takes away the superstar potential that the Rams had in the backfield with Akers. But if you're talking about just what was last year, I think they can find a way with what they have in-house to approximate what they had last year. Albert, oftentimes throughout history, the team that loses the Super Bowl struggles to even get back to the playoffs I don't think anybody's thinking that with Kansas City heading into this season. But when you look at the Chiefs and as they regroup and try to make another postseason run, what's the big storyline you're paying attention to with Kansas City as we're about to get things going? Yeah, I just think it's, you know, as much as anything else, um, the changes in the offseason and and revamping the offensive line. I mean, that's the big one. You know, um, they went through a similar sort of rebuild before they won the Super Bowl on defense when they added Tyron Matthew and, and, and Frank Clark and, and really kind of gutted that group and started over. And they went through some struggles early on on the defensive side. They eventually got there, but it just took some time, right? Like for everything to come together. And they've done, you know, a similar sort of overhaul on the offensive line this year for what happens in the Super Bowl after the injury issues they had at the tackle position and bringing in Orlando Brown and Kyle Long, drafting Creed Humphrey, Um, you know, I think making all the changes that they've made up front, bringing, you know, um, Laurent DuVernay Tardif back. Um, you know, I think they, 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 the hope is that when you get to December and January, that that group is going to become the sort of team strength that was a couple of years ago. Um, but I think anybody knows about offensive line play will tell you that that can take some time. So, you know, I think what I'm most interested in watching with the chiefs, and I know it's a boring answer to this question. I mean, they're good. They're still good in a lot of different spots. I think what's really interesting here is sort of where that offensive line is in September and October, and if that could wind up affecting, you know, where they are from a seeding perspective when we get to the playoffs. Because I do think they will get to a point later in the season where they're just fine at those positions because they did bring in a lot of good players. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 